Tonight we begin our Mountain State Science Series featuring scientific research and science educators. Suzanne Higgins shows us how Marshall University is taking 3D and virtual reality technology, enhancing it and creating a tool for scientific research, economic development, medicine and mine safety training. This is a 3D image of a strand of DNA. Here an individual's avatar, a graphical representation of himself, attends a business conference where others will join from around the world. And here a demonstration, connecting an avatar to a virtual world through a markerless motion capture system. This is Marshall University's 3D Visualization Lab, established by the Center for Environmental, Geotechnical, and Applied Sciences. Dr. Tony Zwilski is director. We receive over 85% of the knowledge and information through visualization. Many are visual learners. In fact, we return on more than 50% of what we learn visually uh, through visual so learning. So visualization is a powerful tool to better understand the world, better understand nature. The lab's virtual reality component is called VISE. That's short for Virtual Interactive Simulation Environment. The centerpiece is a 10 foot by 17 foot rear projected display powered by two Sony 4K projectors and two high-end visual computing systems providing the industry's highest definition single panel stereo display. The resolution is four times the resolution of your HD TV set. Another state-of-the-art feature is its video-based markerless motion tracking system. That means it doesn't require the participant to wear clothing with markers, special patterns, or other sensors. It can capture the full 3D skeletal motion of a person in real time, which can be used to animate an avatar, navigate a scene, or control other elements in a virtual environment. We have the best technology. There's none better than this technology behind us. Super projectors super high definition 3D stereo image that as, as you noted come, comes out like a hologram. Also the virtual uh, platforms. When you're sitting close you are drawn into it just like the movie Avatar in 3D stereo. While we can't experience the full 3D effect through our TV camera lens, a group of visiting scientists and business professionals who donned the special glasses was impressed. Visualization is part of my research because I do molecular dynamic simulations where visualization plays an important ro role to analyze the data. With our visualization tools that we have, we see 2D pictures. But here you see the three-dimensional world. You can look into it, you can look behind it. Well, I'm looking for uh, ways to uh, incorporate technology into uh, commerce, into business. Um, and I've looked at uh, visualization uh, techniques for a number of years now. I'm glad to see that, uh, that uh, un the university here is, uh, is picking up on that also, and, and they've done spectacular work. While the potential applications are many, the primary goal of the lab is to create an effective environment for mine safety training and rescue without the hazards and expense of real mine or emergency situations. The university was awarded a $4 million grant by the Federal Economic Development Administration to develop the technology following the Sago and Aracoma mining disasters of 2006. State funds and corporate contributions also helped build this theater-like setting. The mine virtual world looks like a video game. And that's because researchers here have taken existing game technology and used it to create an environment where a miner can come into the lab and with the markerless motion capture system have his avatar complete simple training exercises. Jack Smith is technical lead for the lab and says a new cluster of high performance computers at Marshall will help the lab achieve more sophisticated physics in their virtual world platforms especially if you're trying to do something like in a mine training scenario where you want to control ventilation in a mine, uh, you would like it to have a real effect on the ventilation in the mine, so we try to simulate that. 
uh, or to have real smoke or to have real fire to, to make it uh, seem like a hazardous environment so people react uh, to that environment as if it were real. And so far you re don't really get that. Uh, even in gaming, that's all prescriptive. All those explosions have been done in advance and all the physics has been scripted. Uh, here we're talking about doing it in real time. Uh, so when someone actually you know, hits a button to cause an explosion, the walls are going to collapse and smoke's going to come up, fire's going to come up, and all that will be naturally uh, done uh, through real physics uh, in real time. And that's, uh, that's exciting to be able to make that happen. It's going to take high-performance computing to do that. Smith says the lab also has access to a National Science Foundation-supported consortium of supercomputing resources throughout the country. The work up to this point has been done using the virtual platform called Second Life. It's available as a free download and used by many companies to create virtual worlds for corporate meetings where hundreds of employees gather and interact via the internet. Marshall University students use Second Life to create this virtual world of their campus where students can participate in classes through their avatars. The lab is now working on another 3D software package by a company called Unity. Together with Second Life, it should allow for a more realistic and immersive virtual environment. A group of mining professionals who recently got the demonstration felt the technology will make safety and rescue training personal. A lot of these new guys coming in now, they go through the safety training videos, they see what can happen, but because they don't actually do it and commit it, they don't really get the idea that you know it's going to happen to them. That's a reality check for each one of them when they, they look on the screen and they see their name or their buddy's name right there. Yeah, that's right. It's a reality check for them. Marshall's community is already using the lab for applications beyond mine safety training. Surgery is a three-dimensional sport and so uh, this allows us to do our uh, surgical planning uh, uh, a lot better. A lot of the patients that we operate on uh, have to either lose their legs or arms with an amputation or we replace the, the tumor that we had to cut out with an artif artificial prosthesis that's inside the body. And so what I want to do is to analyze how well they can walk in comparisons to if we had done a different kind of surgery. One of the things that we do in athletic training is sometimes we'll use assistive devices, uh, whether it be an ACE wrap, and in this case it's a piece of elastic bandage, uh, that we are trying to mimic sort of the function of the hamstring. And so we're at our first stages of trying to analyze exactly what the band is doing to the overall gait or his ability to walk uh, in this case. As word spreads of the existing capabilities within the lab, work continues on development of more sophisticated virtual world technology. The focus, mind safety training and rescue. More speed, more motion capture, and uh, more integration, uh, more realism. And we're right at that point where it's all coming together, and that's kind of neat. Uh, we finally got the internet, too, and we finally got a nice visualization. We're finally getting high-performance computing. Uh, and all that's coming together to kind of a neat time. And we're on the leading edge of a lot of those technologies. Uh, we haven't been involved in the past too much, uh, but we're coming in at just the right time. Uh, and I think because we do have a little bit of, uh, of uh, presence in the, uh, at least in the area using the virtual world for training, uh, we'll be a good showcase for a lot of that. For West Virginia Public Broadcasting, I'm Suzanne Higgins in Huntington. Support for the Mountain State Science Series comes from the National Science Foundation's experimental program to stimulate competitive research, investing in West Virginia's future by building infrastructure for scientific research. On the web at wvresearch.org. And our series continues next week with a profile of Jason Best, a professor of astronomy at Shepherd University. Your feedback to us in a moment. I'm Beth Voorhees. Thanks for joining us. Good night.